Hello everyone, welcome to Node University Short Lectures. My name is Azad Martin, I am the founder and the lead instructor at Node University. Let's talk why people use Node.js. What are some of the most common use cases for Node.js? And we will start with web applications. Web application is when you render HTML on the server, it still makes sense to do that for SEO, for caching, for other purposes. You might want to use isomorphic rendering, but web apps, traditional web apps, that's Node.js. And Node.js can do that. You would use a template language. By the way, I'm almost done with the course on edX. It's called Node.js server-side rendering, server-side programming. So check it out. Now, the next most common use case is for APIs. Probably it's the most popular use case for Node.js. Why? Because Node.js is very lightweight, it's very fast, so it's very nice to put it in front of your legacy APIs and between the legacy APIs and the front end or the mobile applications. You can change the data, you can make auth requests um, and uh, JSON works brilliantly with Node. You can implement caching, you can do a uh, mock server test. So APIs, GraphQL or RESTful APIs, that's, that's the biggest, biggest, the most popular use case for Node.js. Then another big use case for Node.js is the front end build tools. Your Webpack, your Babel, your Grunt, your Gulp, all of them are Node.js. Even NPM is Node.js. It's the website of NPM is Node.js and the tool itself is Node.js. Node.js is everywhere in the front end. Even before you deploy, you're building it, you're using Node.js. That's the most, one of the most popular use cases. Then deploy. The deploy is also, people use Node.js for, for the deploy, the deploy tools. Very, very closely related to the build tools. Then for the testing, PhantomJS, now we have um, other tools, uh, headless browsers, automation, continuous integration, continuous delivery, all of them use Node.js. And it's brilliant because it's very close to the browser and the browser interface, Selenium WebDriver. So they are either compatible or they're written in Node.js or they have the Node.js syntax or JavaScript syntax. Then for the desktop, a lot of people use Slack, that's Node.js. A lot of people use VS Code, that's Node.js. A lot of people use Atom, that's Node.js too. By the way, I've recorded an episode where I'm comparing VS Code and Atom, if you are uh, interested or not heard about those, so check that out too. And then mobile, React Native, it's amazing. In just a few days, I've built Ethereum mobile wallet, so I can send some Ethereum. I use test accounts to get the Ethereum on the test network, and um, I send it from the MetaMask to my mobile application and from my mobile application back to MetaMask, and it worked, and all I had to do just spend a few hours uh, across the few days. I used React Native. I used Material UI library. Um, it wasn't the most beautiful application, but hey, it worked and I learned a lot about Ethereum and I used their JavaScript library, Web3. So mobile, it's huge because you can build native application for iOS and Android using just one code base. And then Internet of Things. Have you heard about Raspberry Pi? Well, you can install Node.js there and you can build a lot of interesting, interesting tools. So, those are main use cases for Node.js. I might have missed a few, but those are the main, the main interesting use cases. Of course, APIs, the build tools, they are the biggest, the biggest use cases in all kinds of companies, in startups, in large enterprises, all of them, they use Node.js in a certain capacity. So thank you for listening and watching. My name is Azad Marden. And this is Nord University Short Lectures.